All right. Welcome, bro. welcome, welcome. You guys want to talk real fast? I want to make sure it works before I get too deep. Hello? All right, perfect. Hello? I, got, I have it. I have it. <laughs> I have it working this time. All right. Welcome yeah, to uh, another episode of the podcast, now named the Fancy BXR Podcast. At some point, we'll get fancy branding. We don't quite have that is yet. Is the fancy capitalized by any chance? <laughs> is, is fancy capital capitalized? F? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, it needs to be. But yeah, so today's going to be a, a fun episode. We're going to talk about the Halo Infinite update, some of the Season 3 stuff, and then we're going to also jump into the worst games of all time. So it should be pretty, pretty fun. Uh, before we hop in, you guys want to say hello? Hello. 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 Perfect. All right. Hi. All right. So as everyone knows, about, I think, two weeks ago now, the December update for Halo Infinite came out, which brought the custom game browser and the pit mostly along with i think that's most th those are the big things right yeah i mean like what well, got with the, with the sorry, sorry we're talking about this update so yeah we got the, the pit that came in yeah the custom game browser just kind of like shadow dropped on us right there uh some various changes here and there but yeah but that's the most part that's kind of the big the two big things yeah, yeah, so uh, obviously, like, custom game browser is pretty, pretty cool. I mean, I don't think most people were really expecting that until Season 3, so that was a pretty big pretty big dub on that front. Uh, the, pit, the pit's pretty decent. Uh, what have you guys been thinking so far about the update? Whichever you wants to hop in first. Uh, well, I think it's been pretty good. No, Jericho. Okay, I was just going to say, I, I think it's been pretty good so far. It's nice to be able to actually jump into custom games without having to find parties through Discord and, you know, going through all that general BS. And using Forge itself has been very uh, enlightening as I try to become a good map maker and realizing how much I actually suck compared to someone like Infinite Forges. Oh, and also, it would be nice that when, when when you make a map and you go test it in custom games, it would be nice if the colors would save. My map keeps turning pink instead of red, and it's it's a bit uh, it's a little sad. I don't know how everyone else makes their maps work, but mine are always broken. Yeah, they but mentioned that in the uh, they the mentioned in the live stream though that the, uh, that's one thing that's I think it's getting fixed in season three. I think of Halo Infinite. With the forge, Good. like sometimes colors just don't line up or textures are just, just aren't there or whatever. So get that look forward to. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, so uh obviously, I mean, yes, I know I think now it works pretty well, right? I know the first couple nights it was having some issues, but uh has the custom game browser kind of performed as you guys would have expected it to, or did you expect it to kind of do a bit more? Obviously, like again, can't see the Xbox numbers, but the Steam numbers at least really haven't moved, even with the addition of the custom game browser. I mean, I mean the uh, custom game browser, yeah. uh, from my experience, has been pretty buggy. I, I tried at first. I'm like, oh, you know, this is really cool. It makes it real easy to play custom games. And I mean, it's definitely easier now than before. But I, I've been having all kinds of issues with it. Not, it won't let me join games when I get into a server. It crashes. It, it's been a mess from my experience. Um, but I don't know about you guys. I actually haven't tried it out at all. Whoa. But that's mainly because, uh, because I've been the one hosting the custom game. Oh, so people yeah, okay, me, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So, um, so because I've just been, you know, just had different Forge maps to even get any kind of content out of it or whatnot kind of stuff. But uh, so I haven't really had a chance to jump in. But from what I've heard, for the most part, it works. It's functional, but it's not perfect, obviously. Yeah, it's definitely the... the crashing. Yeah, the bit I used, it definitely isn't, like anything fancy it's just the halo 5 custom browser kind of but maybe with some more mm. bugs but hey they dropped it early <laughs> and like on it i think i was even saying like they should just release whatever they have at this point for the custom game browser and improve it later so I, oh for sure that's yeah. definitely the way to go yeah sure. so i'll i'll take what it is it's, it's not perfect hopefully they improve it at some point but it's definitely a nice feature to have now that we have forge so it's pretty sweet. Um, have you guys played much on mouse and keyboard since the since the update? Yes, I've played only mouse and keyboard since the update. And so, personally, I've been loving it. Uh, as someone who plays mouse and keyboard on everything besides Halo because of how much of an advantage controller has with the aim assist in that game, that it does feel like now, like for me as like a socially competitive player, like I'll you kind of like call me. Like I'm not like a I'm not like a casual kid who just doesn't know what they're doing, but 
I'm not good enough to get Onyx, but <laughs> uh, I'm a solid diamond, you know. But uh, from my experience playing on Master Keyboard, it feels pretty good. I definitely need some more practice with it because on controller, I can normally get around like 60% accuracy, sometimes up to 60 high 60 percentage kind of range for in a match. Where I play on Master Keyboard, I'm like averaging like 50 to 55 percent. So I'm just kind of chalking it up more to just me being uh, out of practice with with the input device, but uh, with the aim assist being added on to it, I feel like it just like makes Master Keyboard a viable option for people. You actually might start seeing Steam numbers go up because of that fact. Yeah, this is this is one of those I- changes that I really wish. Like, I don't know if this is the end all be all, if this is how it should be balanced or whatnot. But I really wish when we were screaming before the game came out that mouse and keyboard was dog shit, that someone would have listened back then when we had all the the PC players on mouse and keyboard. Because like I think that like you just said, I think the game actually being playable on, on MNK would have kept players around even if the state of the game was the exact same. Because a lot of MNK players, like they quit before we even got to the point where, you know, we were like drowning for for content and there was like all the issues and stuff. They just left because the game felt terrible on MNK. So like this is definitely a very positive change. And like I said, it might not be the end all be all for balance, but I'm glad they're trying something. Uh personally, I think I would have nerfed controller aim assist rather than going the opposite direction that they went. But there are downsides to doing that too, where Infinite can be kind of funky to aim as is, even on a controller. So if you would have removed the aim assist while you're like, while the top end players probably would have been fine, it could have negatively impacted maybe your more casual player on a controller that might have actually struggled then without the same aim assist. So this doesn't have that issue. It purely just helps uh, PC or M and K players while not hurting controller players. Uh, well, it won't hurt their aim. I mean, obviously now if you're a controller player, I mean. You are you will now maybe face slightly better MNK players, so it will affect you, but not in quite the same way. But yeah, does anyone anyone else have any thoughts about that? Do you, well, you're talking about like how if mouse and keyboard felt felt better at launch. I, I was wondering, like, do you think that would have kept a significant amount of players around if mouse and keyboard was felt better when the game actually came out? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about like a huge, huge portion, but I definitely think it would have kept some people because there's plenty of people that I've seen make comments or I've talked to that literally just stopped playing because it felt bad on MNK. And they like those people, I wonder if they would have been more likely to come back. You know what I mean? So like maybe they didn't stick around this whole time because obviously like the game got pretty light on content and it was pretty boring for a bit Mm -hmm. but if they had stuck around two three months instead of two weeks they're probably more likely to return once you actually get the content in there and you get the fixes so i think it would kind of like trickled down i think mnk players would have stuck around a little bit longer and i think more of them probably would have returned where now really the only mnk players returning are like still halo players that just like People like Kevin, they've been playing Halo anyways, but now they've decided to play MNK to try it out. And that, that was me too. Like when I launched up the update, I played MNK to check it out, even though I I would have mm-hmm. launched up the update and just played controller, right? So and and there are probably some people that purely like played MNK and came back just to check it out. But I think had had this like this balance between the two input methods been there since the start, it could have helped a lot, especially in a world where games like Apex and Warzone and like Fortnite to a less degree just constantly have the issues with controller versus mouse and keyboard. So if Infinite had felt better on MNK, it might have actually kept some of those people around who were more frustrated with those other games. Yeah, see, I just question how much like of an impact that would actually have one. On the population, because I think about games where controller isn't even a viable option, and like all the controller players just switch to mouse and keyboard, you know what I mean? And they or, just use that. It doesn't turn all these controller players away, like Valorant and Counter Strike. Many of them just play mouse and keyboard, as opposed to just not playing at all because they don't support controller. I guess that's also a good those games. You know? To turn mouse and keyboard players into controller players, right? Like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, yeah, or like Rocket League. Most people just play Rocket that on League. a controller. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I guess that is a very fair point. Maybe it doesn't have the same impact that I was kind of thinking. For Valorant and Counter Strike, that's actually a great point. I I would want to counter it and just be like, well, that's because it's been a PC game forever. But no, I mean, when uh, but it's fair yeah. to play controller on PC, and that's always my point. Like when people talk about input methods being balanced. 
why don't we start with the worst defenders where they're not balanced, which is literally Counter-Strike and Valorant? I'm not saying they should have controller support. I, I respect if a game like just wants to cater to one input method. I, I mean, if that's their decision, I think that's fine. I mean, because when you try to cater to both, you get this like mouse and keyboard versus controller thing. So I, I'm just saying like those games, Counter-Strike and Valorant, they're the worst defenders for for unbalanced input methods. So for I sure. say if we're you know if we're talking about balance, we need to talk about those games before Halo and COD and and Apex and and all those games. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's that's a fair point. Even Overwatch, uh, now that it has crossplay, if you play with a controller on in a PC lobby, you don't get aim assist. Or if you play in a console specific lobby, you do. So that's the same deal. Basically, it's saying if you play on PC, you play on MNK, right? <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, and that definitely hasn't really affected Overwatch either. I mean, Overwatch has had its own issues, but MNK versus controller was never, I don't think, an issue that Overwatch has, has had. So yeah. And, and I did, yeah. wanted to ask you, do you know of any other, like since this update for Halo Infinite, it kind of in a way gave a little bit of aim assist to like mouse and keyboard in a way. Um, do you know any other game that's done that? Like provided actual aim assist for mouse and keyboard? I mean, there's been a... There's been like single player games. El Dorito had it if you ever fucked around with that. But okay, most yeah. most people turned it off, I think, in El Dorito. Uh okay. or like the server itself would turn it off. Um Oh yeah, I think I remember that. For competitive shooters, I can't really think of any, at least in the modern times that had it. Uh I can't, I can't think of any that would have had it that that were like relevant. Maybe there's like some weird indie game that I can't think of. Didn't uh the OG Shadow Run have aim assist that was crossplay or was it just so floaty it didn't matter I don't that's remember way back you remember yeah, that's, that that's why I don't remember I don't yeah, remember I, don't remember I just either. ask cuz it, it's just a weird thing to I hear about aim lot, assist on mouse and keyboard you know yeah. Well, also, it's completely yeah. unintentional. They didn't even mean to do it. It's yeah. a yeah. bug. Yeah. So, what is it like monitoring it? Yeah. So, how do you guys feel about that? So, obviously, like their goal wasn't that. I my from reading the blog post, my understanding was their goal. It was just supposed to basically kind of turn your sensitivity down a little bit when you hovered mm -hmm. over people, which would have kind of the same stickiness effect. But what happened was they just actually got like a, I from what I can tell, a pretty small amount of of aim assist. But instead of so they, they, they put the patch out and it was pretty positively received. And rather than ripping it back out, they kind of just said like, Hey, we're going to monitor this for a bit and kind of see where it's at. So how do you guys feel about that? I think that's the right course of action. Cause I mean, there's a lot of positive, uh, you know, reaction from it, but also a piece amount of negativity from it as well. Just cause like, you know, I'd say of any kind of input community i guess i'll put it that way that master keyboard people have always felt like no raw input raw skill that's the way to play kind of thing you know and uh i mean i think it's the right course of action because i out of all games i think like i was honestly thinking like that would be the one solution you'd have to do for master keyboard if you're not gonna really want to change controller too much because if you change controller too much i mean you're kind of messing with like the core aspect of the front of the community right mm -hmm. like You've been messing with the core movement mechanics of Halo, of messing with the mouse and keyboard, or messing with the controller. So I think it's more just like trying to make uh, mouse and keyboard on par with controller rather than uh, making controller on par with mouse and keyboard. Yeah, when it comes to controller right now on Halo Infinite, like, I mean, I think you can argue that, like, this has, like, the least aim assist out of any Halo game. Like, it's, I agree. it's mm -hmm. you know, the hardest game to shoot in. And people are always, you know, talking about like how the input methods aren't balanced. But I mean, I think you just got, at some point you just got to accept that they are different input methods. You know what I mean? They are mm -hmm. different, so things shouldn't feel exactly the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, from my experience of playing on mouse and keyboard, that it you can definitely tell it's there, but it's not like it's grabbing your aim like it does with controller. No. Or, yeah. Yeah, they you said with they controller, to... you just use you mainly use left stick to aim, and then you use your right stick to kind of just use micro management, ma micro manager aim right there a little mm -hmm. bit. Where like a massive keyboard, like I feel like it's you could definitely tell like I said, you could definitely tell it's there, but it's not like anything where it's like auto aim. Whereas people I've heard call it like I saw like a level cap video calling it like auto aim on mouse and keyboard. I'm like, hold up, <laughs> like even on like I said like even earlier that like my accuracy in general has been around fifty to fifty five percent compared to like on controller, it's usually fifty five to sixty five percent pretty mm -hmm. common. 
Yeah, well, pe- so. People also call it auto aim with a controller, and then they pick up true. a controller, and then they can't aim with it. You know, that's <laughs> that's my favorite, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that's true. Aim, yeah. aim assist is I, definitely. I do want to throw out. Yeah, yep. it's it's it could be a problem at times, but I do I did want to throw out with the population of Halo Infinite, like PC wise, with how many people are playing mouse and keyboard. Honestly, I would just keep buffing it if necessary because there's not really that many players playing on it right now. And if the game ever makes a resurgence, then you can kind of come back and balance mouse and keyboard back down with controller if it becomes too powerful. But there's so few players, I don't see why that would be a problem. You know, just keep buffing it until it's, you know, a reliable input method. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. But yeah, I, what I was going to say is I think the issues with aim assist get uh get like overblown and exaggerated well like like pop q said people are like oh like it it literally aims for you and then you pick up a controller and you kind of realize like it doesn't but in halo infinite's case they were definitely unbalanced <laughs> between the two methods so it's ni- nice to see some changes uh besides that with the december update was there much else that you guys have uh that much else that you really cared about or anything i mean they I can't really think of much else they really added. So well, they added red reticle to PC. Oh, you're right. They and did. Oh, yes. I, I something dawned on me the other day. Do you think the reason that they did that is because of the the new equipment, the shroud screen, where you can shoot through it? And if you know you didn't have red reticle on PC, then con- uh, console players would have an advantage because they would get the red reticle through this shroud screen thing. So I think that could be why they did it. Did yep. d- does. And I apologize because I haven't watched many of the clips. Does your reticle turn red when they're in it? Uh, I, ass- I assume it really doesn't. Tell. I couldn't tell from the stream. I couldn't tell from like leaked clips or anything like that. I can't imagine that it wouldn't because you can shoot through it. And when you like shoot through, I don't know. I mean, it could be different for the equipment. I just know when you shoot through like leaves and stuff and it your reticle turns red, mm-hmm. even though you don't have like visibility on the other player. So I assume it would turn red. Yeah, but it, it was a point of feedback that a lot of players wanted to see coming. True, as much true. As I just, wanted. I just wonder if they acted on it now because of that. But I don't know. Got you. Yeah, I, I mean, that I definitely... don't think so. But yeah, but, I get, it, I get your point though. Yeah, that could be. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Obviously, but uh, that kind of before I do want to talk about the stuff that they showed for season three. But before we hit that, I do want to talk about the other kind of like. The December update we knew was coming, we just didn't know what was in it, but we also got the Steam Workshop support for MCC, which I think is pretty sweet. I don't think there's really any downsides to it, other than there's, it's not perfect, like I still wish there was still like, uh, functionality with the custom game browser and mods, there isn't, so you don't, it's not quite perfect, but uh, besides that, I mean, I've used it a little bit, it makes downloading and installing mods a billion times easier and simpler you just download them from steam now they have their own menu and everything it's it's, so nice yeah it's It's really good so i think that was a really positive change that we knew was coming at some point but didn't necessarily know it was coming in december so do you guys have any thoughts on that i thought that's the first thing everyone thought when you heard mcc coming to steam was oh my god steam workshop you know so basically it's like dream come true for halo players kind of or like we finally got what we've been wanting for all this time. And I've actually had a chance to jump in. Like, yeah, it's so much easier now just to doubt, you know, to subscribe to a mod on Steam Workshop and then just start playing it. Like, we can start doing our custom mod nights like we were kind of starting to do there for a bit. Yeah. Because, oh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's so way if someone easier. doesn't have a map, you can just be like, oh, hey, just download the map. Yep. Yeah, you, know? you just link it to them. The only thing that is actually a big deal, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but the Steam Workshop does not support custom sounds. So any mod that you use it that use custom custom sound functionality, you still have to replace the sound files the old way, or the mod creator had to remake their mod to not use custom sounds. So I think that's kind of a bummer because custom sounds are a pretty big deal in a lot of those different mods. And I wonder the only thing that makes me think why they might have done that was to avoid copyright stuff because like. Some people, even in mods today, have custom sounds that are ripped from other games, and and that is technically against the EULA, but no one enforces that. So, yeah, mm. I don't know. Good, mm. good update in my opinion. Uh, plus, we got Halo Four and H two A mod tools. Um, yeah, I just it, it's another case of man. All I can think about is what if this came two years ago? What if this came a year ago when MCC still had a player base? Right, like. 
That would have been yeah. insane. Think think when Reach dropped and we had like a hundred some thousand players on Steam and it dropped with mod support and or the mod tools for Reach and the custom or and uh Steam Workshop. That would have been insane. Whereas like it's now it's just a what if, you know, we'll never know how much stuff like that could have helped because it came so late. By the time it came, you know, MCC is, I mean, it's not even the main game anymore, right? Infinite is. So that's my yeah. only like quote unquote issue with the update is all, it's just a what if for me. What, what if this had came many, many, many times ago? So. Especially yeah. during that year when MCC on PC was kind of like the new thing, right? Yeah. Like if I felt like getting a new game on PC was like, oh my God, it's like new drop, you know? It felt like a live service, really. <laughs> yeah. If you're sure. playing the same game we played like 10 plus years ago, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. had to ship 10 years ago kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. So I I don't know. Any, any final thoughts on the on Steam Workshop? It's awesome. Update. That's all I guess. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's cool. I haven't checked it out, but yeah, it's, it's obviously a good thing. I played sure. some they... Battlefront or Star Wars Battlefront map, and that was about it. Oh, I remember yeah. playing that. Abyss is mine. But yeah, it was that good. One's, that was yeah. sweet. Yeah. It was good. But, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I downloaded the Kashiras, if I pronounce her name. Uh, like Halo CE and Halo Remastered. 3 mod. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks sick. That That's looks like cool. that. Actually, cool. the, probably the better remastered than the actual remaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Using Marcus Leto's, like, Unreal Engine modeled, like, Master Chief. Oh, oh yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that that's a there's a ton, a ton of really cool mods for MCC. So hopefully they get a little more uh, life to them now that they're easier to play for people. I guess so. the, the next thing we need is like, you know, mod support in the custom game browser. Oh my yeah. God, yes. Yeah, that would be uh, sick if that if that happens. That's the dream. I mean, yeah, there there's actually that a lot awesome. of a lot of like possibilities there. But mm-hmm. that's yeah. like a lot of red tape as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean. Yeah, because uh, all of the mods or all the custom game browser stuff, I mean, it runs off dedicated servers now. So I guess it could run off their servers or you could allow people to create their own servers. But that has a lot of its own red tape, obviously, because you kind of have to make sure some funky stuff isn't happening there, you know, so. But yeah. All right. Uh, Season three. So uh, do you guys I personally didn't watch the, the showcase. I've seen clips here and there. So I've seen things like. They're remaking the plaza in Forge. Um, they're adding some more armor cores. If Kevin, if you want, you run with this. What, what all? What all they show us from season three? Oh my gosh! Actually, I wrote up a document on this thing when I made my video about it. I just pulled <laughs> up real quick here. Uh, so yeah, they mentioned uh, a Forge remake of Plaza is coming into the game for season three, which is great. So you got technically it's a third map coming with season three um like what else we got here uh a bunch of like different forge fixes forge maps coming in the matchmaking for season three as well that's gonna be huge and it sounds like they tr- actually tried to make a matchmaking forge ma- matchmaking playlist before uh the winter holiday kind of season but things just kind of got jammed up my, is my guess and they kind of also went into a little bit of like why it takes so long to put forge maps into matchmaking and stuff like that basically it deserves a lot of testing that's pretty much what they're doing uh, they also mentioned uh, water, place, placeable water coming in with season four of Forge. Um, like what else? Talk about uh, like player outlines being in, being removable in custom games for season three. Um, kind of going through, trying to pick out all the good stuff here. Uh, I guess we could just go straight to like what they're talking about the future of Halo Infinite in season three. So we got like the new menu, uh, the new Watchdog Neo coding coming in. Where it's supposed to look like the actual watchdog coding that we got <laughs> promised before yeah. the game. Uh, the Fine. SPI Armor Core, which is from the what Shadow, what was something of Onyx book, right? What's that book with the SPI Shadows Armor? of Onyx? Shadows of Onyx, is it? That Ghost of Onyx? I think that's what Ghost of Onyx. Ghost of Onyx, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Chimera Core, which is the kind of just like low key, just kind of, you know, scrolled right through right there. Looks like something straight out of like Crisis for like a core, which is weird because like I always find like the way they're doing like their fracture cores, even though they're not like technically like lore related, that they don't really tie much into like the theme of the season for the most part, you know? Yeah. Or I would like this Chimera core just looks like some straight out sci fi. I saw Andrew Way, who used to be like the multiplayer lead at 343, say that like I'm glad some designer took my suggestion of saying like, 
having an armor core that looks like the inside of a Spartan kind of thing. So I was like, okay, that's kind of an interesting insight. Then you got the bandit rifle. They still got to look at the new BTB map. Uh, code name is Oasis right now. Looks pretty good. Shroud screen, like we talked about earlier. Shroud screen, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting take on the whole smoke grenade kind of thing. We'll see how it plays out, though. Um, we also got a chance to see some winter contingency, too. Coming here on this the 20th, if I remember correctly. And they're coming with, you know, an actual event pass this time around that's actually worth grinding through. Your first, the first hat in Halo Infinite. Ooh. Oh my God! If two players lose your freaking minds, because now you get in Halo now with hats. Poggers, <laughs> guys. Have so many pogs, yeah. The poggers and shit. <laughs> um, and like ping fluctuation fixtures and stuff like that. There's a whole lot of other things. Yes. Uh, if you want to get into the details of all the, of all the whole thing, but uh, that's kind of like the major points of the whole thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It sounds sounds good to me. Like sounds worth checking out. Obviously, I mean, I'll we'll just kind of wait and see. But it's... we'll see if they do the narrative event this time around. Rather than yeah. being like, "Hey, I'm a Spartan and you're a Spartan, go play Molar Player now." <laughs> Story over. You yeah. Know? It, <laughs> yeah. So it, I... it'd be nice to get a real cutscene or animated thing, kind of like yeah. what Apex does. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. those, those would be sick if they did a full Warzone. animation. Like how like Warzone does for their seasons or like what Brown Rush and I played last night with the raid. They had its own oh, yeah. dedicated cutscene that was unique to the whole thing. Pretty that much every other cool. game, whatever it does. Yeah. And so yeah, hopefully they do something a little bit better than that. I assume you can only do better from what we got in season two. <laughs> but you, you never know. It could get delayed anyways. But I mean also they did say that like extended long seasons are done they're like it's not mm -hmm. happening again so four month seasons are going to be like the regular thing now with halo Infinite. we're just like thank god Burns. we're gonna get more than two maps in a whole year <laughs> yeah no i it, it definitely seems like they're kind of over the hump a little bit in terms of you know getting content out for the game so hopefully mm -hmm. I mean, I can be the Demi Downer and say I think it's a little too little too late in terms of massive success. But obviously, any type of content or additions to the game, it's not going to hurt the game unless they somehow break it. But most likely, this will all be positive changes that the community will like. And so it's good. Uh, I mean, you can't really complain too much about a season that's not even out and it's just adding new stuff, right? The, <laughs> the smoke screen looks but interesting. We'll find something, don't worry about it. We'll find something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. But yeah, do you guys have any other thoughts on season three? Uh, I do have one thing. I can't help but feel like the reason... I know they probably talked about the Forge maps coming to matchmaking, but I can't help but feel like since they have to work with the Xbox One... That's one of the biggest hurdles they have to get over with Forge Maps, making it actually function right on an Xbox One console. I mean, that's just how I feel about it. Because Forge is a little wacky on it from what I've experienced. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I the normal Xbox One. Yeah, I, I think the OG Xbox One should have been abandoned. I think it is definitely holding the game back. And it was probably holding the game back from, from the get-go, but... You know, I, game came out in a weird time where obviously it was during during COVID and stuff and not everyone could get new consoles and so monetized you said it yeah so it would have been it would have been weird to not ship it on the old consoles but it definitely if infinite had come out now i'm not saying it should have been delayed another year or two but like if it had come out a year or two later it probably cuts xbox one support which i think would have been beneficial for the game but yeah they could have just had a a cloud version of infinite on the xbox one you know what I mean? Yeah, and they could have. That's true. The cloud versions kind of suck, but yeah. Sure, but like the Xbox One version sucks too. Like, <laughs> what, what's, what's like the point here? Yeah, you know what I mean? At least cloud I would help the development. Actually better. It might be, yeah, because like, I don't know, the Xbox One version runs like ass. So like, I don't know. Yeah. They say you don't like playing a shooter version. in 30 frames? Dude, if it even reaches that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the, like the cloud version at least wouldn't have held back development. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, for sure. And, it's and not... it would have advertised a new feature they were trying to promote, right? Of their True. biggest game. Yeah, yeah. but you kind of need to have the game like available for people to like hold the disc, put it in the thing, you know? Right, but that's um, that's for Series X and PC owners, I guess. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Fair enough. I think that kind of wraps up season three, unless anyone has any. Oh, I actually did. How do you guys feel about, because I talked about this when we were playing, uh, when we were playing yesterday, uh, Kevin, obviously they're doing a Forge remake of Plaza. And I just, I don't, and it's not a bad thing. Like, I'm not going to complain that 343 is making Forge remakes, but I also don't quite understand why they are. Because... I think either 343 should make dev made maps or they should leave Forge maps to the community. I don't understand why they have developers spending their time forging maps. At that point, hire someone that will just make a real map. That that's kind of my thought. Like <laughs> I I don't know. I, I understand maybe they did it with the pit to kind of throw something into the game. But to me, like we're gonna get this version of Plaza, right? And I'm I'm going to put money on it. By the time the version of Plaza comes out that 343 makes, there'll probably be one just as good made by the community two months prior. There is, there is, there is one that's, now. That, that's the question. There's one that looks pretty but good right now. Clearly, a rash did not watch my Plaza? best Forge remake no, video. No, I, I, I know there is one now. I just <laughs> do haven't played those it. work on Xbox One, though? That's the thing. The, the community made Forge maps function good on a normal xbox one console probably not where but... four where three for three making it they're gonna make it as optimized as possible yeah no I, that's a that's a fair point but then we kind of circle yeah, back to the previous a... point where it's like the xbox one's just screwing the game over abandoned it. like honestly yeah, like, but fun. i mean in the last year they kind of touched on this too it's like because then you have to bring an extra person in to like have them work on their map on their time like saying they could have like a full-time job uh, they might not be that capable at Forge of understanding like how to optimize their maps or something like that. Where if you just do it in house, you just dedicate like some dude to make Plaza. You know that their quality is there. You know that once they make a map, it's going to be what you expect it to be. So you don't have to do so much testing. But even though they did mention like well, with the with the pit, I think they mentioned like it was like six weeks worth of testing that they did in blockouts just to get that map uh, ready to go. And I so just, I, 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 I it's just, like a more of a quality assurance. Community thing. has proved that they can do even better. Have you seen that pit yeah. remake? Yeah, the pit remake's sick. That Let's is the best map remake I have ever seen. Oh, it's beautiful. Ever. That I, at first glance, I thought it was Halo 3. That <laughs> remake is an insane. It looks just like the pit. Man. Insane detail. That's the version of the pit that I want to play. They didn't even have like the brute that like pops up as is well. Yeah, like, really isn't, I don't think this yeah. is it, is it? This ain't it. Yeah. yeah. It. They have the no, grooves no. in the wall perfect. They have the you know, the gate on the one side of the map with the pelicans and the warhogs out there. It, it is it's such such a good remake. It's insane. It's it's the remake. And yeah, that's the version I want to play right there. So yeah, but I, I think I the mean, one that they so have maybe, right now is pretty oh, sure they the one that they made is fine. It, it's not a terrible map. But I think because of how insane like uh, Halo Infinite's Forge was or it, or it is, like I feel like they should have taken advantage of that and tried to make a a pit remake as one to one as possible uh, with Halo Three, just to, just to show how close they can get it. And the person who did the pit remake, I mean, he he definitely did that. It's pretty accurate. Yeah, they made a lot of changes with Empyrean before, and from what we saw from the reveal of it. In the uh, the that pro event to what we yeah. actually got in the game, they made like a lot of changes that actually made it more true to the original, which is really nice to see. Uh, but and also, like, obviously, the lighting was way better now in this one, where it's not so like neon purple like we uh, like we saw in the original uh, mm -hmm. reveal. Yeah, That's I just. Point. I just I, for for me personally, I, I get you because you said they spent weeks playtesting uh, their version of the pit, like the block yeah. out version. But to me, I just I don't understand. Like, if you wanted to use the tool to block out maps, go for it. But then at that point, just like hire a map designer and make it into a real map. I don't know. I'm just I I'm I'm just I it's I love Forge as a tool. I think it's very cool. I just think it's weird that three four three in the year. 2022 is still using it as a crutch for their own video game because yeah the community can't make a real map that's why we have forge and it's an awesome tool you can make so much cool stuff in it but when you're 343 you just have map making tools just make a map that's that's my opinion i i, I know this is probably oh, yeah. a quicker mm -hmm. and easier way to get maps into the game but i i would rather them just I, spend that time making a true remake of plaza if that's the map that they want to bring i always wonder though like I don't know what's the whole like why does it take them so long to make like actual maps 
Because, like, I'd have their tools complete dog shit, and it's, like, one of the worst things to work with. Or, like, they don't focus on it. I don't know. Because, like, when you make games for maps like Counter Strike, or when you make maps for games like Counter Strike, right? It it really isn't, it doesn't take you that long, even if you've never done it. You just watch a couple tutorials, right? You get something going. And I feel like on a professional level, that could be done way quicker than, like, what do we get, like, two maps in a year? You know yeah, what I mean? I get, if I'd had to guess, like, it's probably that the maps just aren't a priority for them. Back in the day when you had map packs, and that was how you monetized the game post-launch, there was more of an incentive to make maps, to make good maps. But now that you monetize the game in other ways, there's less of an incentive to get maps in the game. And I do think it is kind of embarrassing that by March 7th, the game will have been out, well, over a year, and however many months, and we're, we would only have gotten four maps, four dev-made maps, and this is the live service Halo game, and I mean, that's a lot less maps than what um, previous Halo games have gotten years ago in a shorter amount of time. I think well, the boys the got two maps. Pointed out. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. man. I was saying the boys at the Microsoft can't point out, saying like how like the non-line service, like traditional Halo games, got more support when it comes to content than the live service version of yeah. the yeah. game. And I mean, Halo yeah. Five had better live service than Halo Infinite. Halo Five had it's a insane. great live service. Yeah, so Halo like, Five had a lot, and they said that wasn't sustainable. But mm -hmm. okay, then what I mean, about was Region Three? What about those with all their map packs that got? What about got? all the other video games that do it? Like Call of Duty <laughs> yeah. just released two maps within like what? Oh, they're uh, they're, going ha they're going they're going yeah. ham. <laughs> the Season is, one reloaded though, like content like, overflow with Call of Duty right now. They're yeah, fixing shit. Get... They're getting content like yeah. yeah. Yeah, to be fair, COD's not perfect either. That game's pretty, pretty. No, no, iffy. by no means. Right, but <laughs> it's still popular because despite the flaws, like the gameplay is fun, the content is there. Mm -hmm. You know, and people look over flaws like lag, crashes, and stuff. If there is like something there that they can like and play, I thought but the raid was, was fun. Maybe it was pretty basic. I haven't played but the raid yet, but like I'm just saying, like, really good. I'm just saying, like, there, you know, even, I, I dislike DMZ and stuff, but, like, it is content, it's something to play and, like, yeah. test out, and, like, I don't know, the gunplay is good, I think, Warzone is uh, interesting, nice, feels almost like Warzone 2, I think it's a good sequel, and the multiplayer is good, I don't know, campaign wasn't that bad either, so there's, like, a lot of going, going on for Call of Duty, updates and stuff, yeah. Yeah, for sure, I... To be fair, I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna compare them one to one, now this is a problem that should be fixable. It's just they have put them, and I don't think maybe three four three has done this, but maybe Microsoft has put them in this hole. But like, I think if you compare, it's the same company. All of no. the studio, well, not yet. That hasn't gone through. But uh, <laughs> who knows if that's no? Gonna I go think through. like Microsoft and three four three is the same company. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I think the execs at Microsoft probably make the big calls. Right, but I, I think it's weird to like use Microsoft as like an excuse for 303's failure because it's the same fucking company, dude. All right, yeah, yeah, I don't enough. go to so a we'll franchise just... McDonald's and then blame like Ronald <laughs> McDonald. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, they were, like you know what I mean? It's the same fucking, same fucking company. All right, fair enough. So someone uh, over there has made the call. McDonald's was cold. God damn it, Ronald. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know. <laughs> fair enough. But anyways, what I was going to say is I do think Call of Duty has a lot more people that actually work on the game. Now, like I said, that, that is a solvable problem that someone is making the active choice to not solve. Now, you, we could argue on why the why they've decided to do that, but clearly from what we've seen on, on LinkedIn posts and stuff, 343 is hemorrhaging people, and they aren't really replacing them to the same degree they're losing them. Plus, 343 doesn't have nearly the amount of support studios that that cod has where you have oh if you, cod is insane yeah. yeah if you scroll through the list of studios that work on a cod game it's insane like i didn't even know the other day i was on twitter and i got the, you i got they put out that patch for the pc crashing and it was by some company i'd never heard of and i opened it up and it's a company that's just working on the pc like optimization for cod like imagine yep. if infinite had that <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I, think right. it, I think it was eleven studios that worked on the new COD. Yeah, it's also insane. Like, right? It's ridiculous. They also have like, uh, you know, they have like different branches across the world, like yeah, Activision Shanghai, or like you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. or maybe it's Infinity War Shanghai or something. But like, yeah, I guess Three Three also doesn't have that, but Microsoft does maybe. 
Yeah. No, my, actually, does Microsoft even? I don't know. I mean, Microsoft's a worldwide company. They definitely have offices. Right. But they have. But yeah, they have like. All the world. I they doubt have like a specific studios. Yeah, right? they I don't doubt. Have like, Mi- I doubt Microsoft offices yeah. in other countries are working on three, three, four, right. three video games. Yeah, or any video games. Yeah, like, and then, we, uh, I think uh, we had that I, Russian company that was helping support things, and then of course things happened. Yeah, and Saber. Stop that from happening. <laughs> yeah. Continuing on. For sure. Saber. Uh, or yeah, it's Saber Interactive, isn't it? It was some Russian company. I don't remember. Well, the the only companies that helped were Saber right. and Splash Damage, but it. Splash Damage isn't. Uh, they're not Russian, and they're also working on that Transformer game. Mm. But uh, yeah, Perry said it was Saber. But uh, yeah, so obviously we can't figure or we we don't make those calls on why they have less resources, but they do. But it's not really an excuse because if if they wanted Halo to be massive, they should give it the resources it would need to be massive. So, plus you could probably find a bunch of companies that have similar resources to three four three and still accomplish a lot more. So, <laughs> it's a conspiracy time, right? Yeah, but I also would say, like, even though, like, yeah, we saw like Halo Four do pretty well, like financially, when it comes to the release mm-hmm. of the game. But, um, like, I mean. Like, Especially in the last, what, seven years, I would say, Halo hasn't really proven itself, I would say, to be like a super financially mm-hmm. viable product where you could justify having X amount of studios working on the uh, on the live service or whatever of the game because like the, the population, as we can see right now, it just isn't there. But now it could be due to the lack of support with Halo Infinite or it could be just like, you know, people have been playing Halo for 20 years and they know what the game's all about, you know? Yeah, I also think I would make the argument it's not lucrative for those companies to work on Halo. So in the case of Call of Duty, where they have all these support studios, those studios probably aren't going to do anything that makes anywhere near the amount of money that Call of Duty does, right? Where in Infinite's mm-hmm. case, like Splash Damage can go make their own video game and probably walk out ahead of whatever they were going to get paid to do support for Inf- for yeah, Halo. That's what that's what Sony Infinity is doing. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, well, they're they're making a Halo game, but still, oh, you know that you mean yeah. the game they're working on, yeah. And that's yeah, like a that's another thing, thing too, like where thing. yeah, exactly. So certain affinity, that's a great point. They are helping with Halo, but it's not even it. It's pro- if they're making their own video game, it's not their priority. That I you would have to assume, right? So even even in that case where they have a support studio that's helping out with a specific game mode even in their case their time split cuz they're also still working on their own stuff whereas like these cod studios do they don't they don't make other things they they are a cod support studio you know mm-hmm. so can i can i bring up a wild conspiracy yeah 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 let's hear it so phil spencer a couple of weeks ago said during like you know the yeah, activision yeah. blizzard stuff is going on right he said they do not have enough popular games on Xbox. And that made me think, what if they made Infinite Fail on purpose? Because that would explain all the fucking goofy ass shit they fucked up on, right? If it was on purpose, you know what I mean? Because they needed Infinite to fail. Because what if Infinite was too big and then they couldn't buy Call of Duty? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it would yeah. explain it. Well, they're not doing a good job because Sony still won't let them buy it. <laughs> I mean, sure, Sony Sony can argue all they want, though, because yeah, like, Sony, at the end of the day, it's up to regulators. Sony doesn't want Microsoft to have COD, right? <laughs> the, the Halo has not been brought up a single time. No matter time. what. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. But like, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they can't bring Halo up because it's dog shit, right? Yeah, 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 but what be, if Halo Infinite actually popped off? They would bring it up every fucking time. No, that. I mean... Yeah, we're probably uh, sure, probably in a conspiracy land. We're but, going down the rabbit hole. But hey, I mean, it, it it is a fair point in this current state where, yeah, you're not... Halo isn't making any cases as to why Microsoft would have too much micro, uh, get like share on the market, right? Because Halo has no market share, so... Yeah. Yeah, but for sure. Okay, well, uh, any other Season 3 and or Halo-y things before we uh, switch topics? Subscribe to a rash on YouTube. I don't even my I haven't put out a main channel video. Subscribe to Rash on TikTok. That's true. Yeah, yeah. On TikTok. Me, I'm a TikToker now. Yeah, there we go. He's a TikToker. <laughs> All right. So before we get into make $3 the three dollars a month. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> But before we get into the big topic, you know, talk about the worst games of all time. I do want to talk about just kind of what what we've been playing for the past two weeks uh, since the since the last podcast. Kind of, you know, what what we've been up to. So, Pop Q, why don't you why don't you go first? What have you been playing the past couple of weeks? Odd. Uh, yeah. How do you did you uh, play yeah. the raid? Perfect. <laughs> no, I haven't played the raid yet. I, I 
I was just playing Warzone pretty much, and I explained my experience with that on the last podcast with, you know, the bugs and the <laughs> crashing. I think they've improved a lot of that since. Um, but I've been playing less in, you know, recent weeks, and the Shipment just came out. And I'm at, this is actually the most fun I've ever had, playing Shipment in a Call of Duty. Usually I'm not a huge fan of Shipment because it's, like, barely a map. You know, it's just a small square. Uh, but considering I don't, I hate all the other, a lot of the other uh, maps in the new Call of Duty game, uh, Shipment's been pretty refreshing. So that's what I've been up to. Yeah, no, I've been, uh, I've also been playing a ton of, well, just, yeah, Call of Duty in general, I've been playing a ton of Warzone, and I tried the raid out last night with Kevin, and Warzone and Call of Duty have their issues. I mean, the game still kind of has crashing issues, and if you are, if you read into the, the Warzone community specifically, they have a ton of issues with the game, but from someone that wasn't into Warzone 1 or anything, it's fun. I, I've been enjoying it outside of the bugs and the crashes. The, there's like certain you know little nitpicky things that piss me off like the looting system and stuff like that but no overall it's a ton of fun the raid actually pleasantly surprised me i was expecting a very bare bones shoot some bots and call it a day raid where the difficulty would be purely being annoyed by how many bots were on my screen but honestly it it has legitimate kind of puzzle mechanics and you know me kevin and pat were dumb and got stuck and had to use a youtube video so <laughs> you know, but like, oh, even then though, like we should have been able to figure it yeah, out i didn't even know that there was a extra set uh cctv yeah, yeah, like yeah. in the other room we were failing for sure but no i think the raid is a lot of fun it doesn't necessarily have super playability in my opinion compared to like a destiny raid or something like that but true it's definitely worth a playthrough and, and no one expected it to be a destiny raid if you did I would question why, <laughs> but no, it's, it's a lot of fun. Warzone is great. Obviously we just got the season one reloaded update. Like, like pop Q said, and that dropped shipment, which I actually haven't tried shipment yet. So I'm going to have to try that out pretty soon. But shipment is crazy. Is, is Christmas, sh Christmas shipments coming, right? Yeah. I think yeah, it's it in is. the game right now. Oh, no, no, that's pretty cool. Or if you can play in custom games or something like that. I saw oh, someone maybe that. doing it. Yeah, you can do that. Dude. Uh, uh, okay, never mind. I was gonna tell like this weirdest story. They did Christmas Nuketown for Cold War, and they had it like Krampus. They, they, yeah. the Krampus event was fucking weird, and they had like the what is it called like the prop hunt, right? Yeah. And they did not take the fucking Christmas items out of the prop hunt, but they reverted the back to normal Nuketown. So you had a bunch of fucking Christmas props <laughs> on the normal Nuketown. It's like the dumbest <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> uh. That's funny, that's funny, actually. That's, that's actually really funny. <laughs> just some, there's just some Christmas tree in the middle of the road. Yeah, like, oh, I wonder what this is here. Oh, I wonder what this is. <laughs> so uh, on, on the topic of COD, just because I saw a tweet about it earlier, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but since COD's release, it has lost 60% like of its player base on Steam. Do you guys think that is alarming? Is it worth worrying about? Or is it just kind of, you know... It's a multiplayer game, and wait, how has uh, it lost sixty percent? Because it was at like or, almost five hundred k. Oh, I mean, that's it, what you is mean. That, is that normal? I mean, it had. Is that normal for games to lose that much? I don't think. I think so. I mean, games well, that, it depends. Games that hit five hundred k on normal. Yeah, see, that's, the games normal? that hit that high, yeah, do drop. But so, I, I don't know. I mean, every time Apex drops a new season, right, it hits some ridiculous number. But if you go back and check, yeah, it's probably fifty percent down since the the patch hits, right? It's more. Yeah, so I don't know. Destiny, every time a new season comes out. I think out, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think that I gotta speaks be honest. to how yeah. many like, people were like... We are how... talking about still like oh, yeah. top four games on Steam, right? Like, yeah, yeah it's, it's still It's massive. not like this game fell to like number 150 like fucking Halo. No, no, no. This it's, is like, a, it's still you know massive. what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, like, a lot of games peak at, like, way fucking higher. Think about PUBG. What did they have, like, 3.2 million peak? Oh, it did. You know what I mean? So high, and yeah. it, it, it's still, like, one of the top, like, five or ten games on Steam. Uh, but, like, you know what I mean? It, it, that's, like, a, what, like, a, almost 100% degrees from its peak. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. So but it, it's still top five most popular game. So, like, I don't know. I guess you can't really look at the peak if it doesn't no. fall, like, out the of, like... Is the peak is games. Like a, what a realistic number is like yeah everyone keeps going like oh we draw from 250,000 on steam alone but it's like yeah every game drops from its peak when the game first launches everyone plays it for the first week or two and they they get their fun out of it and then like a gradually over time after that then it's just kind of like 
people lose interest because either new releases or people have their fun with it kind of thing. Right. But like, yeah, I guess in the case of Halo Infinite, you know, it should have dropped to like, what, like 80,000 maybe? Like yeah, that would well, be... I, mean, I was still kind of expecting yeah. to have like maybe like 50,000 concurrent players like anytime or like as a peak kind of thing. It was what my expectation. Yeah. 50 to 30,000, but it's definitely... Like a good example is Destiny 2 peaked at 300,000 too, right? And the game is hovering now at around like 80,000. You know what I mean? But like, obviously the new season came out as a rush set, but still. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do, nice. I do think in COD's case specifically, it's like even kind of less important because from my gathering, a lot of people actually do play this game on Battle.net. Um, yeah, it's insane. But I don't, I don't know they why, actually, but they do. Card points. points carry over uh, from uh, the card yeah. points, yeah. I still have like 2,400 card points on Battle.net. That I, I like, yeah. I I just took the, I took the I took the L and I was like, yeah, I have like 400 COD points, but I don't care. So no, here's the thing, Kevin. <laughs> you can just install the Warzone game and just buy something in the store from Battle.net. Like it's free to play, right? Uh-huh. So yeah, you don't use lose the COD points technically. You can just but download between my Steam account between my Battle.net account. Yeah, they're linked. Yeah, because oh, they're, 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 they're linked account. to your yeah, 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 it's linked yeah. to your Activision no, account. Loophole. So like, yeah, we you, found now, you, now that Warzone is out, you can <laughs> But like we didn't know that at launch when the game came out, obviously. Yeah. So like, yeah. So I, I, I just wanted to bring it up because I saw the tweets earlier. I saw some of the, I follow a lot of the Warzone people, and they all are. It's actually kind of funny because you know we, I've been, we've been in the Halo community for the past year, and you know I love to be a good doomer on the twitter feed right yeah. you know <laughs> and uh it's funny seeing all the warzone creators actually do the same thing right now and i just look at the game and i'm like you guys are fucking insane like all these people are like views are down the game's dying yeah. like when are we switching to fortnite like what are we gonna do and it's like dude the yeah. game al- fucking has like 250k players if your views are down like fucking do something else man like c- clearly some of it's no offense some of it's like content related right like yeah maybe posting high kill warzone games in warzone 2 isn't as enjoyable as it was in warzone 1 but i'm sure you can find stuff that still works on youtube right or like on twitch but uh it's it's just funny like i see all this this stuff like it's the warzone's just dead cod's dead and it's like dude I, I we're over here with halo having like 3k players Imagine in- able to have like a new game a full new game with a new campaign multiplayer and everything yeah every year yeah yeah dude. Uh, I got in the wrong game. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, crazy. yeah, I think that's why COD it was it has been such a successful content creator game for years because you're yeah. just you're constantly you constantly ride the hype cycle, right? You get to like, also, like you get to relive the infinite launch cycle every single year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the beautiful, the beautiful you do thing about wonder. COD, if you have a bad game one year, you just you wait till next year and you yeah, get just, another game. It'll probably be better. Yeah. yeah. Um, you do have to wonder how many people like the content creators especially have the mindset now because like Warzone 1 was like different right like a shit ton of people blew up with yeah. it right yep, yep. so like now they're probably in the mindset this has to happen every time or why this does not happen to me now with Warzone 2 right. but, like, you know what I mean so like that probably fucks with you too where yeah. we in Halo like we just have a fucking dead ass game we're cl- happy if like a video gets like 100,000 views it's like a viral <laughs> Halo video no I, 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 know. D- I definitely do think there's that because when Warzone came out it was like the, on YouTube and on Twitch it had like the Fortnite pop off where like you'd, mm-hmm. you'd post a Twitch VOD or like a Twitch stream clip video and it would get like a mill on YouTube right and none of that is sustainable like that that is purely the hype of the video game even in Fortnite's case right and, and I do think creators hit the those numbers and then when warzone 2 comes out and it's more of just a normal game launch and it's not doing that they're definitely probably like what the heck man like you know i thought warzone 2 was going to be like the fucking pop off again oh yeah yeah okay well it's greener on the other side you know (laughs) for sure Uh, no no doubt i think dude my throat Sorry. Mm. All right. Anyways, uh, the rash raid, dude. Rage is just overcoming. <laughs> no, it's it's just dry, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I, I think I think COD's perfectly fine. I just I thought it was worth talking about a little bit because I saw saw people talking about it. But uh, yeah. I I mean I do think Warzone has issues that probably need some fixing. Uh, some of them are definitely overblown. Like some of like while people complain about stuff like time to kill or 
you know, little like not being able to buy a loadout. I don't think any of that's really affecting the casual player base in the slightest. Like they, uh-huh. they probably just launch the game and play it. Crashing and stuff definitely does hurt casuals because if they launch the game to play twice a week and it crashes both times, you know, they might get annoyed and not play, but they'll probably fix it at some point. I, I, it's actually funny because I think they're hitting the same thing right now where like they, they launched a game that isn't in a perfect state and they're going to take their December break. <laughs> so they're going to have like that month long lull where just nothing really gets fixed. But it's definitely probably in a better state than when 343 left and BTB just didn't work. So <laughs> Yeah, that whole oh, yeah. like, two month process of like the big, not even new mode, but the big mode was just not working just strip just didn't work <laughs> yeah all right fair enough uh i think that that's cod luke have you been playing anything besides cod uh, final fantasy 14 and world of warcraft i guess oh the new okay. wow expansion right yep what do you what do you think yeah. about it i like it i mean i haven't done anything besides leveling and quests so like i mean i always enjoy that experience with any co- uh, with any world of warcraft dlc is so it, I don't know. We'll see like, if I get to the. Yeah. No, I was just gonna, is it like a lot different, or is it kind of just like playing? Uh, out no, again? just new area. Yeah. There's a new class I haven't tried yet, but the class looks fun. So, um, I guess there's the uh, dragon flight where like you can fly faster if you're on a train in the new area. So yeah. it's kind of cool. But yeah. Final Fantasy 14 is that the MMO? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, cool. I don't know. They have a Christmas event, so I lo- like they started a Christmas event yesterday or the day before. So I just logged on, played yep. a couple of hours. Uh, Can't check call it out. Christmas. <laughs> what holiday? Oh, yeah, yeah. the holiday event. <laughs> yeah, the the war on Christmas. <laughs> the yeah, the top tier holiday event. Mm, Gather the children that... so the reindeer can do magic for them. <laughs> is that the Final Fantasy? Is that the Final Fantasy yeah. that won uh, best ongoing game at the VGAs? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. I remember it's, it's it good. It is the only really MMO. Good. It is the only MMO that ever made me feel like I'm playing World of Warcraft again. Like, mm. because like no MMO can touch World of Warcraft usually. Like, I've played so many MMOs over the years. So much fucking Korean stuff, Chinese MMOs, or like even Western Lost MMOs. Dark. They never touch the same uh, same feel as World of Warcraft. But Final Fantasy XIV got kind of close. It uh, oh, there's like been there's been articles. It's like past WoW in terms of uh, in terms of sub base. Like it, it's actually yeah, like it's yeah. it's surpassed. Well, maybe not now because WoW just dropped yeah, a new expansion. Well, you guys but... remember in like 2020 when they had to stop or 2021 they had to stop selling the game because it was too popular. Yeah, and like they did yep. not have physically enough server to like host all these players, so they had to stop selling the game for like two weeks. Wow. <laughs> Because yeah. I couldn't get new servers as easily because <laughs> of the chip shortage. So, like, they literally had to stop selling. It was like Square Enix, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure they have, like, big, big servers. It was fucking insane. Yeah. Yep, for sure. All right, Kevin, anything besides COD or Halo? Um, I played a little bit high on life, actually, the other night. Yeah. Game. That game is freaking hilarious. Like... <laughs> I don't care, like, if the gameplay is, like, average or whatever, or the progression or whatever. Like, the the idea of the game is, like, to have fun and make you laugh. And does it do that? It absolutely does. And, like, I saw Jared, I saw you upload, like, a review of the game itself. I put, I played for I the did. first, like, two hours or whatever. I, I got into a, as I quote, quote, unquote, fucking space. And... <laughs> oh, yep. And, uh... It, it... Met Gene, whatever the guy's name was. Gene something, whatever. <laughs> yep. But yeah, it's like it's total like Rick and Morty type of humor. So if you're into that kind of stuff, like you're gonna absolutely love High in Life. It's freaking hilarious. I'm laughing like every like every line is supposed to make you laugh, pretty much. Well, it's nice to just have a video game that doesn't take itself seriously. It's like you know, it's not some huge depressing drama or anything. It's just like, hey, go kill some fucking aliens and try to save the world. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's like. Oh, it's just, yeah, it, I can't praise the game enough, man. It's it's fine. Plus, like, no. visually, I think it just looks really good, too. I mean, it's not, like, crazy yeah, on the it, graphics, it but it looks great. The lighting's really good on it. It's on, uh, it's on Game Pass, too, right? Yeah, that's how I was playing it. Yes. That's pretty okay. pretty convenient. 
Yeah, very convenient. Yes. <laughs> no, for sure. No, it it looks I've, cool. I uh, I actually I pinged Jared the other day asking if it was worth playing. So I'll probably I'll probably pick it up at some point and try it out. I think. Uh, like Pass. Pass. If you have Camp Pass, definitely do it, dude. Yeah. No, it definitely seems. Uh, is it? It's from like a smaller studio, right? Uh, Squanch Games. Yeah, which no. is like, you know, I, or if it's that yeah. Rick and Morty thing, I was like, it's a Squanch or they have yeah. to say or something like okay. that. I've, I've never heard of them, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it definitely seems cool. Uh, sometimes, you know, December can be a little bit lighter on game releases, even though I think technically Warzone was in December, wasn't it? But, and last year yep. Halo was in December, but usually December is a notoriously light month. Uh, Actually, no, Warzone was November 16th. Oh, actually, Warzone 2? Actually. Was it really? Oh, you're right, dude. It was a while yeah. ago. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, about a month ago. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Damn. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. It doesn't feel like that because there's yeah. a constant stream of shit happening. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> We're in Halo. It's like a week. You're like, ugh. Yeah, like Halo Infinite feels like it's been out for fucking 10 years. I'm ready to move on. Where's Halo 7? Yeah. Like, legit. <laughs> Fuck. ODST 2, please. Ooh. All right. Actually, well, uh, yeah, maybe. Jared, besides besides high, besides the games we've already talked about, what, have you been playing anything, or did you have more to more to say on High on Life? Nah. I know you did the review. Yeah, you go check it out if you want to hear my opinion. It's a great game, and 